Y'all lucky my battery went dead. I caught y'all in elevators and everything. So this is what I'm doing. December the 8th, uh, this is my mailings, this is my documentary because my probation officer said I got to keep them documented and abreast of everything I do every day. So this is what I'm doing today, Miss Humphreys, and I'm going to keep my promise to you. I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing about pissing y'all off because until you give me a trial, that's what I'm going to do because you're giving me Dred Scott, you're giving me no justice. So... Alright, this is showing that I came to D.C. Here goes my videos, I'm passing out the videos for free for people to see. The truth about Shorty and the truth about what's been going on in Lake County, Illinois for the last three years. This is my film crew. The film crew just put the documentary together. This is the organization I'm part of. Citizens for Change in Randallstown, all right? I came all the way to Bal from Baltimore to here to tell this story, tell the truth. In the store, I made him a cup of coffee. We were just talking about uh, standing up for yourself and being a man about things in life. And uh, he was just brought up Malcolm X out of the clear blue sky. Now, everybody know what I'm doing, but this is coming from this man's mouth. Tell him what you just said about Malcolm X. Hey, I just made a statement about Malcolm X. Malcolm X was a man of great intellect. The man spoke the truth. And as much as it hurts in this world, in our society, when you speak the truth, you have the upper authorities that want to suppress you. These is the Baltimore Sun and ABC News that won't tell the truth about my illegal incarceration and my false imprisonment. I have showed you public officials from the Senate, the Congress, and even the President, you know what I'm saying? Asking you to he hear this case. You're, I'm not going back to the state of Illinois because I fear for my life. And I'm saying it right here. I'm not going back to Illinois. You're, I'm going to fight extradition, all right? You're going to have my trial on public display just like I'm doing this here on public display. Everybody that knows about it, the movie, the senators, the congressmen, and this book is going to be put in front of a grand jury, a federal grand jury. Do you understand? You're not going to kill the truth. You're not going to kill the messenger. You're going to pay me what you owe me. And I'm going to claim every dollar and every dime. $2.5 billion class action lawsuit. I told you I was going to earn every dime of it. And here I am in D.C. doing it. this week. It's the underground. This underground was created because you're denying blacks and minorities and underclass their rights in America. You're denying them due process equal protection. You're denying them the rights that they were born to be withheld under the Constitution of the United States. So I made a documentary about racism in the judicial system. And I'm exposing racism in the judicial system. You still have black codes that were instilled in the 1800s. You're still enslaving us. You know what I'm saying? You're still disenfranchising our population. You're still calling us names. And you're still disrespecting our women and our men. You're labeling me a terrorist. And I'm not just terrorizing you with the truth. I'm not John Brown. I'm Frederick Douglass. I didn't hurt nobody. I just put the camera in your face and you didn't like it. You don't mind putting the camera in our face every day, putting us on, caught on video, dumbest criminals. Well, dog, I flipped the script. I'm a dumb criminal. But I flipped the script on you, on this end. It's a legal notice. I invoke my constitutional right of self-representation for my government and senators and congressmen to defend my rights under the Constitution of the United States, due process, equal protection, and the freedom of speech. And I notified each one of these courtrooms Baltimore County, Baltimore City, and the state of Illinois, Lake County, because you're denying me my civil and constitutional rights under the United States of America. And I'm leading the fight through the Underground Railroad. 
Bye. Since I can't leave the state of Maryland no more, I'm gonna get in my truck and I'm gonna drive to every one of these points and I'm gonna, dri I'm gonna drive to every one of these points just for a day off and I'm gonna videotape it. Just like Frederick Douglass went on his route or John Brown. And I'm gonna reenact slavery time. I'm gonna reenact the Underground Railroad. I'm gonna do it right in front of you. Because the state of Maryland refuses to let me travel anymore. I can't leave the state no more. I can't go visit my mama in Las Vegas and she's sick. I can't go see my son in North Carolina and he dying. This is what community is about. Coming together for a common cause. And to save a life is a good cause. Alright? Everybody here is trying to do something positive. To bring closure and bring something for this family. You know what I'm saying? This could be your child. This could be your mother, your daughter, your sister, your brother. This could affect you. But why wait till it affects you to do something about it? You got to do something now and stand up and be a part of something. Or you're going to fall for anything. And that's what I'm trying to do here. This is the vigil for the Nichols family. And I guess me and the TV people is falling over each other today. <laughs> This shows our community support for the problems that, that affect our community. And today's problem is Miss Mia Lynn Nichols. And we need to do something about that. She deserves to be found. She deserves the same attention that you're giving Kaylee Anthony down in Florida. She deserves the same, same answers. The same answers that they want, that family right there want. And they deserve to hear them answers. I'm calling our government to start defending them and our news entities to start displaying this on the paper just like you do the little girl down the floor to do this for these people right here in Baltimore because they need this they deserve the same presentation the same representation that you give anybody else in America they call it due process and equal protection and we all right here fall under the blanket of the Constitution and that's what we're looking for and that's what we're doing here today We also have some representatives from uh, respective communities to come and to share, and so the family has invited Mr. Dwayne Davis to come as a community uh, liaison. Mr. Davis, let's welcome him. First of all, uh, y'all got to call me short. My name ain't Mr. Davis. <laughs> all right. um, I met Mr. Nichols at the mall about a month or so ago because I'm doing a documentary about the issues that affect the black community. You know what I'm saying? Crime, incarceration, the way our stories get portrayed in the media, and us as a people. Just because Barack Obama became president don't mean our problem went away. You know what I'm saying? If we don't start acting like we acted in the 60s and transforming our community and making that change, we're destined to repeat our past. You understand? Now, black women missing and raping of our women and our children dying is nothing new to us. This has been happening in the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, the 60s, the 80s, the 90s, and now. You know what I'm saying? So we got to get our message out and people got to understand what we're talking about. We can't keep talking about it at water coolers and cafe and Starbucks. We got to start acting on the things that's in our mind. 
I'm a 50s baby. I'm a sat on the bus, the back of the bus long enough. We got to start acting like Rosa Park and start stepping up. And we got to start holding ourselves and our community accountable for our actions. All right? This ain't my fight. This is our struggle. You know what I'm saying? And right now, I can help somebody save their child and save a life. I'm making my contribution to society. You understand? I'm not a preacher. I'm not a saint. Everybody knows sure you've been a sinner. <laughs> but we got to make a change. And we got to make a stand. And this is how I can help you help yourself. I'm part of the Citizens Committee of Change for Barack Obama in Randallstown. And this is what we do. We outreach. We, we're having a health community fair. We're going to do things about uh, women's rights. I work with Turner Bottle. That's an uh, organization for rape victims. I raise money for them. You know what I'm saying? I raise money for people, but now I want to raise the consciousness of the society. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Sure. And if I can reach you and teach you, then you can reach and teach another one. If I can talk to you for 15 seconds, I can still do anything. And you're going to pay attention to what I say. Correct? So we got a common problem here. Let's find a common solution. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> this legal notice is going to get stamped all over Baltimore, all over the state of Maryland, asking for my freedom. Asking for a day in court, asking for a Dred Scott decision. Every church, every synagogue, every everything, it's going to be all over. I gave you a taste this week, and I gave you a taste a couple weeks. Because Ash Lake County, y'all, yeah, I roll. I roll. Right here, we are employing any and all appropriate officials in the state of Maryland to assist Shorty to achieve complete justice in Illinois. That's a constitutional, vi that's a constitutional right. And you violate my right by not recognizing my right to petition. That's a constitutional right. And that's in there. And Judge Boers, Judge Bridges, the Lake County judicial system denied me that right. They didn't deny me my right of access to the court. The 1964 civil rights, I have access to the court and the newspaper, dog. If you don't give it to me, you're going to have to shut the newspaper down. Anything that the government funds, just like egg corn, if you deny me my rights, you're going to have to shut it down and take your fundings away. I told you this was... Diary of an Economic Hitman, and cuz, I'm gonna hit you in your pockets. Vigil for Mia, that's where Mia was living at, it's the last known address. And this is the people who came to show their support for Mia's situation. That's where Mia was living at when she came up missing. Until she comes home to us. This is out to the Nichols family. And I did the best I could with what I had. Like I said, I ain't got money, but I got time and knowledge. And I'm going to help you get your story out about your daughter. Because she deserves She deserves it. It's like the real told y'all this is how I can save a life so I can help better my community raise that banner high let the world see your problem so they can help us solve them these are some of the family and friends who come be on watch and to get answers for our sister Mia. We come all the way from New Jersey and all across town. We're going to continue to be prayerful, not only for the house and for Mia, but for you. Yes. In the house. Yes. And we want you and the rest of the community to be vigilant with us that we get the answers that we need to be satisfied in this situation. So I just wanted to make sure that you met these people and that they met you. Yes. Look good at them because you're going to see them again. Amen. 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 <laughs> to shine upon you yes. and to give you peace. peace and may his peace be with each one of us until we meet, meet again. again yes let the people of God say amen amen amen, amen. amen.
Supreme Court. They say a fool who represents himself in law, he's a fool. Cause I'm a heck of a fool. And I got plenty of law. Lake County signed for papers today. And I'm getting a mail receipt. And it's a direct appeal to the Supreme Court, Rule 302. I'm asking for it. You're gonna do it. And Larry Flint said he gonna pay my he gonna pay me. He will pay anybody with scandal, cuz I got scandal for you. I got enough senators, congressmen, presidents, judges, and public officials to fill a book. Matter of fact, nine of them. So like my probation officer said, do everything right, have everything documented. This documented enough for you, Miss Humphreys? Cause you're gonna see what I do every day. You're gonna see Carmen getting on the toilet, dropping his bombs. Monday, July 26th, I think. 27th. 27th. Uh, this is Cheryl Nelson. This is a postcard from Vegas. Me and Cheryl have been to Vegas. We didn't have fun out in Vegas. Me and Cheryl have been knowing each other for 10 years. My wife know about Cheryl. It ain't no secret. You know what I'm saying? So y'all ain't got no dirt. Y'all can dig on me. This is a postcard from Vegas and it's going to Mr. Waller. Turn the postcard around. See what it says? It says the fat lady is ready to sing. The shorty side show is getting ready to begin. And that's Mr. Waller and the address. Now see, Mr. Waller destroyed my videotape from Christmas. Michelle was in the Christmas tape. Michelle was in a lot of stuff, all right? So now we're going to go over what Miss Cheryl knows. This is, a, I guess, a video documentary, and it's going to document the racism in the judicial system and how you deny me due process and to have witnesses to appear on my behalf. My trial in uh, the state of Illinois, I got the right to have witnesses appear on my behalf in other states. All I got to do is summon them. The courts refused to let me have witnesses, review evidence, and they denied me due process and equal protection. In other words, they railroaded me. They gave me Jim Crow justice. They accused me of a crime I didn't commit, and they just let my black ass stay in jail. All right? So now Ms. Cheryl and me going to talk about, I'm going to tell you everything Ms. Cheryl know, and she's going to uh, agree or disagree. When my son was murdered, you put the card down. When my son was murdered, the night he was murdered, I was in bed with Ms. Cheryl. All right? I was asleep with her. You know what I'm saying? She was my friend and my companion. She still is. Gonna always be my friend. And ain't nobody gonna be between us. You understand that? She seen me get up and birds was trying to get rid of me. Dog, I don't care who I I don't care who it affects. Because you didn't care who your lies affected. Jeremy Stemmick, that's his phone number, dog. He gave it to me when we went out of jail because we're gonna tell this story about pay to play politics. That's jailhouse material. That's evidence, and Lake County got it, but he don't want you to see it. Burris, deal with it. Now each one of y'all, Dodd, Burris, Reed, Durbin, Hanson, all right? I went to each one of y'all's offices, man. I got videos, and now I'm getting ready to send all of these. I got 25 of them. I'm going to send them to 25 different people, 10 in America and 15 to different news entities across the world. You know what I'm saying? Enemy of my enemy is my friend. We're putting democracy, democracy to, to a test. We're putting democracy to the test because for real, for real. We're going to see if the NAACP going to defend me or leave me hanging out to dry. It don't matter to me because I can be my own lawyer, self-representation. I can represent my, take, my case in the United States Supreme Court. They say a fool who represents himself in law, he's a fool. Because I'm a heck of a fool. And I got plenty of law. Lake County signed for papers today. And I'm getting a mail receipt. And it's a direct appeal to the Supreme Court, Rule 302. I'm asking for it. You're going to do it. And Larry Flint said he's going to pay me. He will pay anybody with scandal because I got scandal for you. I got enough senators, congressmen, presidents, judges, and public officials to fill a book. Matter of fact, nine of them. So like my probation officer said, do everything right, have everything documented. This is documented enough for you, Miss Humphreys? Because you're going to see what I do every day. You're going to see Carmen getting on the toilet, dropping his bomb. I say, to anybody out there, we deserve the same diligence, okay. same sense that y'all run out there after everybody else. We want that same thing. We want the same thing right here. Same right same here in Baltimore that you give in Florida. We out here. We out here just like they is in Florida. We out here. You know what I'm saying? We out here just like they is in Florida. You need to give us the same attention you give in Florida.
Because if you don't give it to us, I'm going to be in your face. I'm going to be right there because I only got nothing else to do. Like I said, bomb threat, terrorists. That's what you charge me with. What you going to do when they had that trial in New York and you got my trial? It's going to make America look real crazy. Because I'm going to leave you on this note. I'm a vigil vigilante. I'm the voice for the underclass. We ain't got money to pay for for our voices to be heard in the Senate and the Congress. He get up and do what I did, all right? Didn't make no threats to nobody, all right? I called Judge Boris at 4 o'clock in the morning in March and told Judge Boris what I was going to do to them. Ms. Sure was laying right beside me when I did it. Looked at me like I lost my mind. But when things bother me and things on my mind, I deal with them. I don't run from my problems. Problem coming back to Illinois, and I'm a big one, because I know all your secrets. The stuff that happened out in New Jersey, getting ready to happen in Lake County, Snake County, getting ready to upset your balance elite, your power structure, your money tree, your cash cow. Now, she witnessed the phone call to Judge Boris, and it wasn't no threat, and I didn't threaten his life. I threatened to sue his ass and take his ass to jail. Um, she also was at the Christmas party, and... She was my manager when I left town. Jake had nothing to do with the store. All right? So, uh, tell them who you is. Hi, my name is Cheryl Nelson. And I like to start two weeks prior to the Christmas party. Because I want to make sure I told after he hung up, he called back and also notified Mr. Davis by the time he comes home for his Christmas holiday that the guys who assaulted his daughter will be locked up. When Mr. Davis finally contacted me, he was allowed two calls before I had to start putting money on a card to receive his calls. The calls were averaging $12 to $14 each call. While Mr. Davis was away, his son opened Shorty's Underground Railroad, better get on that train. I had the store closed from January to June. Jay couldn't legally open the store because in the state of Maryland, he had no business license. He's not part of my business. Him, my wife, or nobody. And he never told my customers what happened. You know what I'm saying? So Jim shouldn't have had, Jim and Jake need to go to jail for embezzlement, identity theft, credit card theft, and they need to pay them taxes for last year because I'm not paying them. Now, when I was in Illinois, my, she was touch, talking to Dave Irwin and telling Dave Irwin about my case, and they wouldn't give me no trial or get no witnesses in my behalf. And she was talking to these people in Illinois. She called Lisa Madigan. She called Patrick Fitzgerald. She called every official on that list that my son refused to call. Althea Walsh. Althea Walsh. Everybody. So all those officials that I got them mail receipts, she was the underground secretary. She know everything. And she's going to testify in front of a grand jury when this comes about. That's my key witness. You can't kill everybody I talk to because I got a lot of people on my side. You understand? Mainly the people at that Christmas party. And I'm getting ready to pepper spray the whole neighborhood with my videotapes. You seen what I did today. All right? So anything else you want to know, you need to look at them papers in Lake County courtroom with my witness list and everybody on that witness list can tell you about Shorty's story. I was making a movie about racism in the judicial system. I was making a movie about political pay to play politics in Lake County. I want my goddamn money. You're not going to take nothing else from me. When you took my son, that was the last straw for all of y'all. I'm taking everything you got. Your political careers, any aspirations. If you got kids in college, I want their 401ks too. 2.5 billion dollars is money that you ain't got. Them inmates in the Lake County Jail are gonna stand up and tell about you. 911 is a joke in your town. You know, they don't want they don't want to hear the truth. He had a way of making you feel the truth. You can speak the truth, you can hide from the truth, 
you know, but you have to have the ability to make people feel the truth. And he was one of them person, an individual, you know, of great intellect that made you feel the truth, regardless of who you were. Amen, brother. And I can tell you this here, you know, it's not got anything to do with race or anything, man. I respect the man, and he was my role model. them boys it ain't gonna be nothing nice and I'm not gonna put my hands on them the police don't arrest them I'm gonna duct tape their ass and put them in front of the courthouse butt motherfucking naked promise you that police don't get them before I do that's how I'm gonna deliver them there's a $75,000 warrant out for their arrest I'm gonna do a citizen's arrest and I'm gonna strip and I'm gonna strip their ass